Good morning, everyone. I'm Roy Malone, the director of the Michoud Assembly Facility, and I will be your master of ceremonies for today's event. Thank you all for taking time out of your day to come and help us celebrate this milestone in our nation's space exploration program. A special thanks goes to Senator Vitter, Congressman Palazzo, Mayor Landrieu, and all our local, state, and government representatives and our local community leaders, and especially our contractor and civil servants team that helped make today possible. Today's ribbon cutting on the vertical assembly center tool behind me signifies the final installation of all the major tools required to build the core stage of our nation's next great spaceship, the Space Launch System. We are now ready to begin welding the massive core stage, putting it all together and testing it and getting it down to the Cape in order to take our next step on our journey to Mars. It is an amazing piece of equipment and I'm proud to be here today to celebrate this milestone with all of you. Now will you please stand for the 2007 Grammy Award winner and four-time Grammy nominee, member of the Louisiana Music Hall of Fame and the National Blues Hall of Fame, who will be singing today's national anthem, the Soul Queen of New Orleans, Miss Irma Thomas. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gay proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land and of the free and the home of the brave Wow, that was absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Ms. Thomas, for that staggering and truly appropriate rendition. Now I'd like to, take, like to introduce you to the mayor of New Orleans, the Honorable Mitch Landrieu. Welcome, sir. Appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. Wow. That's the first word that comes to mind as I stand in the shadow of this magnificent structure that is such an incredible symbol about who we are as a country and what we want to be as a people. I want to uh, help welcome uh, U.S. Senator David Vitter. I know Senator Landry couldn't be here, but her staff is with us. Uh, Representative Palazzo, thank you so much. Uh, to General Major Bolden and to Roy uh, and to all of the dignitaries that are with us today. Irma, thank you so much for that beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. Um, we take a moment to mourn uh, the death of Cosimo Matassa, who in the, in the world of art and music was one of the best engineers of the sound that has produced the incredible culture of New Orleans and has helped uh, careers like Irma Thomas and uh, so many other people. Uh, part of the fabric of what makes New Orleans such a great place, art, music, engineering, science, all of those things uh, fold together today uh, as we step into the future. And so I'm just so excited to be here. Nassau is such an important part 
uh, of who we are as a nation. And of course, the Nassau uh, Mishu Assembly Facility in New Orleans uh, has been such an incredible part of our space exploration and what we do as a country. Uh, the city of New Orleans right now is this nation's most immediate laboratory for innovation and change. And as we talk about manufacturing, as we talk about science, as we talk about space, the city of New Orleans and this facility and the people here and our partnership with all of the other fellow Americans across the Gulf Coast and across the nation that have made this day possible, uh, we should all be very proud of the work that has been done uh, by everybody. As you stand behind us and look at this structure, it is a skyscraper, literally, and it had to be designated as such. This is going, of course, to be the tool that helps produce uh, the parts that are necessary uh, to take us to places that we have never been before. And I can't think of a greater symbol for where the city of New Orleans is in her history. As we suffered uh, from the devastation from 9-11, from Katrina, from Rita, from Ike, from Gustav, from the national oil spill uh, to the national recession, the people of New Orleans said we were, we were not going to quit. And as we talked about re-engineering our lives, we never built it back like it was with an eye towards the past. We're beginning to build towards the future, the way we should have always been. And there's no greater symbol for our reach than this piece of equipment that stands uh, behind us. So as New Orleans celebrates uh, the investments that we made from the beginning of New Orleans, when Andrew Jackson uh, won the Battle of New Orleans, we built the Higgins boats that helped win World War II. And right here, we begin the march to the next great uh, exploration in space, which uh, General I know will occur in 2018, which incidentally is the 300th anniversary of the great city of New Orleans as we forge not only a great remembrance of our past, but we begin to lay the foundation for our future. And this is a wonderful symbol uh, and a concrete example of how we are going to win this battle for the future. So God bless you all. Thank you all so very much. And we look forward to this just being the beginning. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Landrew. Now it is my honor to introduce our NASA Administrator, former astronaut, Charlie Bolden. Thanks very much, sir. Thank you all very much. Um, and I'll tell you, um, Senator Mayor Landrew, thanks so much for your remarks and for coming out. Senator Vitter, thanks to you for coming. Congressman Palazzo, this is a big day. Uh, the Vertical Assembly Center is the final major tool uh, completed at Michoud Assembly Facility. And this state-of-the-art tooling will weld together the massive core stage of the Space Launch System. SLS is a game changer. You've heard, uh, you heard Mayor Landrew talk about this is the beginning of the trip to Mars, and everything you've seen around here talks about that. Um, I know there are at least two kids here. Um, you know, and they belong to Patricia Key, who we recognized earlier today, uh, the Boeing vehicle, the Boeing uh, vehicle vertical assembly center project manager, and she was recognized with a silver Snoopy just earlier, has her family here. But what we're talking about here is for those kids, and we all need to remember that. This is not for any of us sitting here today. What we're doing and what we're about is for, for the young people of this nation. We're on our way to Mars, and I really mean that. The state of Louisiana, the city of New Orleans, along with neighboring states, are a key part of building SLS. The core stage is the heart of the space launch system. So New Orleans Michoud Assembly Facility is the lifeblood building the heart of America's next rocket. To give you a sense of its size, uh, you know, 200 feet long, the core stage is 46 feet longer than the shuttle's external tank. With, with RS-25 engines integrated, and the core stage is 212 or 58 feet from, uh, longer than the ET. So it's big, to put it mildly. It's a big day for us, because just two days ago at the Kennedy Space Center, we rolled Orion out. And uh, if you look at the big diagram over there, Orion's the little thing at the top. That's where the astronauts are going to be. Mark Geyer is here, who's the program manager for Orion. It was a huge day for Mark and the team at the Kennedy Space Center because Orion rolled from its assembly facility at the, um, the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building 
across the Kennedy Space Center uh, environs to the hypergolic production facility where it's going to be fueled for its first flight in December. This December, not December next year, December years from now, this December months from now. That's significant because it will be the first time in more than 40 years that this great nation of ours uh, you know, has ever built and launched a vehicle intended to carry humans beyond low Earth orbit. That's a big, big deal. And as I said earlier, the people of New Orleans and this vicinity, you should stick your chest out every single time somebody says, where do you live, what's near you, and say, I'm, the, I'm from the Michoud community, and we're building the rocket that's going to take humans to Mars. And that is a big, big deal. The core stage is the heart of SLS. And it's like I said, just as New Orleans and Michou are essential to achieving America's great giant, next giant leap. NASA just recently completed rigorous technical and programmatic review of the space launch system, and it passed with flying colors. In fact, no other exploration class space vehicle has progressed as far as SLS since we built the space shuttle. That was a long time ago. And earlier this week, the launch facilities needed to get this rocket off the ground passed a similar rigorous review, marking additional progress on these deep space exploration systems. This rocket, again, is a game changer for deep space exploration and will launch NASA astronauts to investigate asteroids and explore the surface of Mars, while opening new possibilities for science missions as well. In addition to work on the massive SLS core stage, the Orion spacecraft's primary structure is wel was welded at Michoud by Lockheed Martin before it's completed to go to the Kennedy Space Center. That spacecraft will make its debut again in space this December on Exploration Flight Test 1, the spacecraft's first flight to space. Astronauts eventually will travel in Orion to an asteroid and then on to Mars. And it all begins right here at Michoud. I see the mayor smiling down there, and I'm glad to see the mayor smiling. Everybody else in this audience who's from this area ought to be smiling, too. It all begins right here. Now, Congressman Palazzo and I, have a, we have an understanding. Nothing goes to space that doesn't go through Mississippi, because that's where all the engines get tested. So I haven't forgotten, Marine. All right, Semper Fi. We're all right. Together, NASA and Boeing and their supporting contractors are providing 600 jobs in the construction of the core stage right here. This facility's features also have attracted other federal agencies and private companies, making Michoud a multi-tenant campus that directly employs about 3,500 people. I call this a federal city. It's, it's very similar to several other centers that we have, and Roy Malone and his folk here, I mean, you know, we're talking about the mayor of a federal city got a big job that he has to do. That's the kind of real-world impact we get from exploration, in addition to the inspiration and hardware that's helping us craft our journey to Mars. I want to thank the workforce here. I really, really, really want to thank the workforce here for their exceptional effort on this project and encourage everyone to follow the progress of SLS. It's going to be an exciting story. I want to congratulate Mayor Landrew again Facility Director Roy Malone, and everyone who has helped us create this cutting-edge tool and move us farther along in our journey. Today, we witness a major milestone for the program and more proof that, um, that the design of America's first, next great rocket is mature enough for production. I want to acknowledge the bipartisan support that we've gotten from our Congress uh, that brought us here today. That's no small feat in today's environment, but we have continued to have bipartisan support on this and other space programs, and I, I really look forward to continuing that. But it's going to take a lot of work on our part and a lot of work on the part of the Congress, so I look forward to continuing our work there. Now, I'd like to introduce uh, a person who's really been a friend of the space program for some time, and that's Senator David Vitter, who represents the great state of Louisiana in the U.S. Senate. Senator Vitter. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. Well, the mayor was certainly right, wow. But there's only one thing more impressive than this piece of equipment, this structure, and that's the team, the human team that designed it and built it and will use it to work on. And I'm so proud of that entire team. 
Uh, I was a very small part of that team, particularly when I was the top-ranking Republican on the Space Subcommittee. We passed the last NASA reauthorization bill that, that got us through that low point, put us back on track toward this program. Uh, but the rest of the team members are just outstanding. Of course, it starts with NASA, all of NASA. So thank you, Mr. Administrator, and Patrick Sherman, and all of NASA here and around the country. Certainly involves the key contractors on this and other programs. Ginger Barnes, thank you, and Boeing, and all of the contractors who make this possible. This program, this feat, is only possible because of private industry as well. It involves a lot of other political partners and stakeholders here, thanks to all of you. But really, the members of the team I'm most proud of, I'm maybe a little biased and parochial, but it's the workforce that the administrator referenced right here at Mishu. And there isn't a better workforce at any NASA facility, any facility in the country. I'll never forget visiting here soon after Katrina, hearing about all the members of the workforce who stayed here, defended this campus, and saved the taxpayer untold millions uh, fighting the flood event. That day, I was presented with a beautiful plaque that was made out of a tree that broke during Katrina, declaring this site Fort Mishu. It was during Katrina. And I still have that plaque, display it proudly, very, very proudly in my office. Uh, I'll never forget talking to so many of the workforce here, particularly during the low point of the NASA program when we were full of uncertainty and concern, quite frankly, for the future. But that workforce stuck it out and stayed here for the future. And as we came out of that with the SLS program, I, I visited then as well, including the last time I was here, was also with the administrator for an event here where we talked to the astronauts on the space station via his cell phone. Another wow moment. Who would have thought about that? And certainly, I look forward to the many uh, further bright spots and important moments here to celebrate with the workforce. Thanks to all of you for everything you do. You can absolutely hold your head proud, and later on in life when kids or grandkids ask, you know, what did you do in your work life, dad or grandpa? You have a pretty darn good answer. I helped build the biggest rocket in human history that that took the longest flights in human history and got man to Mars. Congratulations. Thank you, Senator Vitter. I'd now like to introduce the chairman of the House Science Committee Subcommittee on Space, the Honorable Senator, or correction, <laughs> yeah, the Honorable Stephen Palazzo, Congressman from the State of Mississippi. Roy, I appreciate the promotion, by the way. But, but we do have a senator in Mississippi, his name's Thad Cochran, and he's also a huge supporter of America's space exploration program. At a fundamental level, space exploration, the mission of NASA, is about inspiration. This inspiration fuels our desire to push the boundaries of the possible and reach beyond our own pale blue dot. The Space Launch System will be the most powerful rocket ever built and will carry humanity into the next phase of the exploration of our solar system. This critical asset is the essential component of our future deep space human exploration efforts. 
The SLS is not, is not just drawings on a sketch pad, it is real. You can see the hardware being built and the components being assembled. The RS-25 engines that will be tested down the road at Stennis Space Center and the core of the rocket that will be assembled here at Mishu in the next couple of years represent the progress that is being made toward our goal of sending humans to Mars. We are working hard in Congress to keep this program on schedule and on budget. In tough times like these, it is always a challenge, but human spaceflight speaks of who we are as Americans. We are explorers. As chairman of the Space Subcommittee, I am committed to ensuring the SLS gets the support it needs to be successful. The hardworking men and women here at Mishu and down the road at Stennis are the embodiment of everything that space exploration represents. They are NASA, and they are the future of our exploration efforts. I want to thank Administrator Bolden, uh, my good friend, Marine, Semper Fi, thank you for mentioning Stennis, the path to space will go through Mississippi, uh, for his visit here today. And I look forward to continuing our work uh, with you, with the Senator uh, from Louisiana, and to make sure NASA's human exploration program Remain strong. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Roy. Thank you, Congressman Palazzo. Thank you, gentlemen. Now it's my pleasure to introduce NASA astronaut Patrick Forrester, who flew on the three space shuttle missions and has logged more than 950 hours in space, including four spacewalks totaling over 25 hours of EVA time. Patrick. Well, 32 days ago, there were eight very excited young men and women standing right where you're sitting, snapping pictures, taking selfies with the BAC, and dreaming of going to space one day. Now those same eight astronaut candidates today find themselves out in the wilderness near Lander, Wyoming, as they're trekking through some pretty harsh terrain in the Wind River Mountain, where NASA is testing their physical toughness, their mental toughness, their ability to work as a team, their ability to explore and conquer that small area of Wyoming. And why are they doing that and so much more? Because one day they want to be on top of the SLS hurtling into space. And whether it's a translunar mission or an asteroid mission, or perhaps even to Mars, it's why we do what we do. And I have the privilege of representing those eight young people today as their supervisor and the person that takes them through uh, their two-year training flow. As uh, our administrator mentioned, this is the first time in 40 years our nation has uh, made this type of cost and schedule commitment to a heavy lift vehicle. And uh, our administrator, myself, Kent Rominger, maybe someone else in the room I've missed, has had the opportunity to fly into space aboard that space shuttle, that very space shuttle. And we did some amazing things with it to include building our current International Space Station. Uh, and we're getting some amazing science out of that. But in the end, as important as that science is, it's not the main reason we go to space. We go to explore. Exploration is the expression of the human will uh, beyond Earth. And it's really why we do what we do. And so I'm here to thank everyone that has put their heart and soul into both this VAC, as we get ready to do the ribbon cutting, and into the SLS to make that possible, that we would once again uh, go off uh, beyond low Earth orbit. So thank you for all you do and for the opportunity to represent all of those in the astronaut corps that dream of going to space one day. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Before I introduce our next speaker, let's watch a short video of the amazing progress seen here over the last two years. Please roll the video.
Recently, the Space Launch System received authorization from the agency to proceed into the implementation phase. This means that the path for the future of SLS has been paved. So the SLS is really excited about our core stage. It is what's happening right now in our program. The installation of the Vehicle Assembly Center at MAP is an important part of our mission. The focus here at the Michoud Assembly Facility in New Orleans, Louisiana is factory readiness. We're looking at weld operations coming online, construction of facilities still ongoing, and bringing online the assembly and integration areas to put together the integrated core stage and later the upper stage. The core stage is the backbone, it's the heart of the vehicle. Everything else hangs off of it. The boosters, the RS-25 engines, the ICPS. This core stage is the core stage of the future. It's the core stage designed for Mars. The future is now. The different areas of the factory were first the weld areas on one portion of the factory. The middle section of the factory has to do with our tank processing, proof testing the tank, cleaning the tank, putting the epoxy primer on the tank, and then finally the thermal protection system foams. And then the final area of the factory has to do with the assembly and integration areas because we're building a rocket and not the external tank of yesteryear on the shuttle program, we need to bring on engine integration and avionics that we didn't have in prior processes. That gives us a much more complex factory, but we're excited with the challenge. When we've completed it, this factory, with its people and its facilities, will put together the first stage of the largest rocket ever launched by mankind. Absolutely amazing stuff. Please let me introduce the NASA Program Manager for the Space Launch System, Mr. Todd May. Thank you, Mayor Roy. Uh, a quick aside before I get going, uh, I want to say that whenever I come down here, uh, I always see Roy and I see Malcolm Wood and the folks here at the team. and. And Roy reminded me, I was down here last week, he said, you came down here and you look like a program manager. You were kind of stern looking and serious. And he says, I always love it when you leave because you leave smiling. And, uh, and it's true. Um, when you see something like this and you look up and, and see the size of this thing, you can't help but understand that this thing is real. Uh, in two days, we're gonna celebrate the, only the third anniversary of the kickoff of this program. It was a concept at that point. And now you're looking at a tool you see the, every bolt here, every piece that came together to make this has happened in less than three years. And uh, we've got a nationwide team with, with great partners, Boeing, ATK, Aerojet, Rocketdyne, our sister programs, uh, the Ground Systems Development Office at Kennedy Space Center and Orion at Johnson Space Center. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people, uh, over 500 contractors in 42 states and SLS alone working to pull this together. And, uh, and stuff like this, it doesn't build itself. Uh, as everybody said before, this is people. These are individuals. And, uh, and it's amazing to sit here and look at something like this. If you're looking on TV, you only see about a fifth of this tool. Uh, if you're here in the room, this tool uh, from, from about the, the weld head up to the top is one hydrogen tank of the core. The core would stick 50 feet through the roof of this building. Then on top of that, you have Orion and its 100 foot stack. And so it's great to come down here. You actually get to see um, what this thing is gonna be and how massive it is. And it takes a massive tool to build a rocket that's gonna take humans out beyond low earth orbit and beyond uh, the bounds that have uh, held us for the last 40 years. Uh, and, and just one more little uh, side story. Uh, when I came down last week, I saw one of the guys working on the tool and he had a, he had a yellow uh, jacket on and I looked around and so did everybody else. And I said, how do you guys tell who's Boeing, who's Aesop, who's Jacobs, uh, who's Broadmoor? And he said, you know what, I don't even know. He said, we're, we're a team, we get together every morning, we have a safety meeting, and we know what we have to do that day and we get it done. And uh, I will tell you, that is a testament to a bunch of folks who have come together, um, maybe from different places with different objectives, but we're all working together towards one goal. And so it's great to be here today. Uh, the critical path of this rocket goes through this uh, machine right here. We passed our critical design review on the core. There's 34,000 square feet of hardware sitting in the rest of this factory ready to come over here and be welded up. Uh, I can tell you right now, the team is really anxious for us to get done today and get out of here so they can get back on the tool and get it through its acceptance test and start putting hardware through it. So good to be here today. Um, 
ready to uh, have my partner, Ginger Barnes, and long-term friend come up and say a few words. Thank you, Todd. It is so exciting to be here, and I can feel the energy in this room. Can you, can you sense the, the excitement about getting ready to go to Mars? And we're right here. The most exciting part of my job is representing the team that you see assembled here today and the ones we're representing who couldn't be here today. And that's this incredible workforce that has made this possible. Many of you have talked about the people and the team that it takes to put this together. And it is a team. It's our state, local, and federal representatives. It is our partners. It's our customers. Um, it's the community. All of that's important to building this big tool. We're not only building, we're not just making a rocket, we're making history. So this milestone of cutting the ribbon on the Vertical Assembly Center is big. The machine is big. But it's so important we are also making history. This is such a, a significant event because right now we are 100% ready to build this rocket. So let's, let's go do it. Let's cut this ribbon. Thank you. Thank you, Todd and Ginger. It's now time to cut the ribbon on a truly modern marvel. We're going to use this modern marvel to build another modern marvel, the Space Launch System. Will those people that are participating in the cutting ceremony please come forward and help us prepare for the next step on the journey to deep space exploration. All together, five, four, three, two, one.
You're ready to fly. That is the most important thing for all of you to get. start by explaining to us what you guys are doing down there today? We're working on the techniques and tools to explore a small asteroid. 